Let's talk about whiskey. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Joining us now, Tom Licks. He's the founder and CEO of Cleveland Whiskey. Hi, Tom. Hello, how are you? I am doing great. So You're going to do better soon. I, <laughs> so, so tell me uh, about Cleveland Whiskey. What is, what is the premise here behind Cleveland Whiskey? Uh, so I'll tell you what we're not. We're not a craft distiller. We're not a micro distiller. We're really an innovation and technology company. And, uh, you know, we anticipated this sort of worldwide demand and the whiskey shortage and thought there was a better way to do things where you didn't have to put something in the barrel and wait for six or eight or 10 or 12 years. I'm not that patient a person. Um, and I think there's some better ways to do things. And uh, you, you've got three products I see there in front of you. Yeah. One of them is sort of a traditional oak uh, uh, made bourbon and the other two we actually use different woods so they're entirely different in the whiskey space so this is the uh, traditional bourbon um, yeah and how old is it so uh, well you know what why don't you taste it first <laughs> actually I'll let Alex who's more and, of a bourbon guy then, taste it and then so the, the way no. normally whiskey is made is the same way any uh, spirit is made you ferment something Right. Uh, and and distill it, which uh, it gets the water out, increases the alcohol content. And then, if you drank it, then it'd be corn liquor, basically. It would be well, and it'd be pretty nasty. <laughs> it'd be pretty nasty. So, so then you yeah. put it typically in something like an oak barrel, and you age it for a long time, sometimes sixteen right. years. Right. Yeah. Well, in in fact, for a bourbon, you have to put it in a new American oak charred barrel. That's part of the definition. Uh, the good news for us is they didn't say how long it had to be in the barrel, uh, <laughs> but does have to go into this new American oak charred barrel. That's part of the definition of bourbon. So you are doing that. We are. We just don't leave it in the barrel for very long. <laughs> we can, we can, you know, it's like you pour it in and then we pour it right out. And, uh, you know, we can't <laughs> well, use wait those a minute. So are you doing this that just for legal purposes so you can call it bourbon or does it actually I'm, enhance I'm, the flavor? I'm, I'm, Unfortunately, yes, we do it for legal purposes wow. so we can call it a bourbon. We really don't Actually, have to that's use wood. No, it's good. Yeah, we still have to use wood, um, but we use pressure vessels. And, and essentially, we're almost doing the same thing that's going on in a barrel anywhere way, where every day you have 24 hour temperature cycles that changes the pressure inside the barrel. And that's moving the alcohol in and out of the pore structure of the wood. And you get anywhere from 60 to 80% of the flavor and all of the color wow. through the interaction with the wood. So really, you figure out a way to speed up time. How long does uh, Cleveland bourbon get aged for? Well, so so what you just tasted was probably in a barrel for a day or two. And what? Then it went through our, and then it went through our process is. for 24 hours. So that's only a couple days old. Well, and, and I guess that uh, one of the things... It doesn't taste fresh. It tastes like it, bourbon. This tastes like bourbon. It tastes great. I'm not uh, an expert. You know, and I, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm an expert, but I have a lot of experience. And so I... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and, I, and, I'll, and I'd say that, that, that this is a very, you know, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good bourbon. And, 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 and uh, uh, now, one of the things, I guess, it, it also, in addition to dealing with the shortage that we were talking about right. a little earlier, I guess this also allows you to innovate a lot faster because you're not... Well, there's there some other woods, like this is a between, cherry wood, this between is an iterations. Wood. Is, that, yeah. is that right? Right, it, it really does. Now, so so I think you're drinking the uh, the bourbon that we finished this with black cherry, cherry wood. wood. Oh so my you gosh, could try that's good. making, you could make a barrel out of black cherry wood, but it would leak like a sieve, and most <laughs> other woods are like that. I mean, oak is a beautiful container, and that's really what it was wow. designed as, as a storage container, as a way to transport. That good? And it was like only an cinnamon. accidental yeah. discovery that said, hey, it will make it taste better. But there's beautiful woods out there right. like black cherry, and right. uh, we can do some amazing things because of the technology. Uh, one of my favorite whiskeys is Glen Morangi, which is aged in port wood. So that's one way they get some flavor. It's still an oak barrel, but the oak mm -hmm. has been used to make port. Then they reuse the barrel, and that adds some port uh, texture and flavor uh, to right. a whiskey. Right. So I mean, essentially, it's because the port is left in that other in barrel. There. Yeah. So it's like pouring a little port into yeah. your yeah. burp. But it's delicious. But I understand that. the desire to put apple wood or cherry wood. That really gives you an interesting. Now, and there uh, is, and the beauty here is, there's no sugar, no syrup, no artificial flavor or color. All of the flavor in those comes from the wood. You're not dying well, it. The, you're not dying it. It's not dyed brown. This is no. actually from well, the wood. That's that's the wow. color from the wood. You'll notice if you look at those two bottles that are our underground bottles there that are on the sides, 
they're different colors, and that's because of the wood that's used. I think the black cherry will be a little darker yeah. than, uh, than the apple that's there. Yeah. But, and they have entirely different flavors. They really do. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been doing this, and what's the reaction been? What's the marketplace like? Uh, so we've been shipping since March of 2013. We're in about 13 states. We're in Germany, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Japan. And yesterday we got our first order from China. Wow. That was a big deal. But um, uh, we are called heretics in the industry. People think oh, what we God, do is Oh, God, yes. Sex. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're not very happy with it. Um, but, uh, you know, we just keep plugging away. And I think the beauty also of the technology is we keep making things better. So what we make today is better than what we made a year ago. That's better than what we made, made well, the I, year before that. And we'll and keep I, doing that. Because you can innovate. And I think, yeah, that's the whole thing is that you, your, your, your iteration is so much faster than everybody else's. Okay. I mean, everyone else is really based on tradition, whereas sure. yours is really based on just constant. This can, you can change it every week, right? Right, exactly. And, and in fact, we do. We're experimenting with mesquite, with pear wood with pistachio with a whole range of different things and you know some of them don't work out and the other <laughs> ones are really great so the other thing i love is you're one of the first companies to use the newly created equity crowdfunding system this is came of, out of the jobs act in the past with crowdfunding you know we were talking about kickstarter i'd give some money to a company maybe i'd get a product but i wouldn't get a piece of the company you're doing it so that people who help fund this are actually getting stock in the company. Yes, yes, they actually get stock in the company. And the beautiful thing for Cleveland Whiskey is that we wind up with a lot of new owners who are customers, who are fans, who become evangelists. I love that. You know, since we started this a couple of months ago, uh, you know, we have uh, new conversations with French distributors. We're in a chain of retail stores in upstate New York we never would have been in, all because of our customers who are now owners going out right. and saying, hey, you should carry this product. That's great. And are now are you available in California? We're not in California yet, so if anybody is watching and they are a distributor, please give us a call. It's not a legal issue, it's just that you don't have a distributor in the it's, area. We're just not there yet, right. So how did you get started in this? Were you a traditional whiskey maker before this? Uh, well, sort of yes and no. I learned, I learned spirits making when I was in the Navy 40-some years ago, making bootleg spirits. I was <laughs> You're That's making Pruno! <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and this, is a, this is a story I don't tell everywhere. You know, we, we had President Obama come and visit the distillery, and I did not tell him the commander-in-chief this story. But, um, uh, you know, yeah, so I was the apprentice of, of somebody who had tapped into the steam lines and the seawater lines. He was fermenting oh, fruit juice from the galley. He was making God. what he called That's hooch great. for the ship. Not only our ship, but all the surrounding ships. He had this amazing business going on, and I trained <laughs> under him. I mean, later I had a software company. I did all sorts of other things, but I always wanted to go back to spirits. Tom, I am really thrilled we could have you on. That is a great story. And I wish you all the best. Cleveland whiskey uh, is not – is there – you can't buy it online probably. You I would can guess. buy it online. You if, you go, if you go to our website, clevelandwhiskey.com, you can – Eat, buy it online. You can also click a button there that says invest if you're interested nice. in investing. There's a couple of things. I think that's great. You could buy a hundred dollar share in Cleveland and uh, and Love have it. some stake in what's happening. And you're exactly. actually in Cleveland. We are in Cleveland, right in downtown Cleveland. I think that your motto. I was, though, I, was, I was in Cleveland recently, and I can't believe I didn't know I would have come so over. And, and, and just, next time, next time you're there, you should come by. I'd love to have you come by. I definitely will. And your motto is it's the water, right? <laughs> no, that's not your motto. This is so cool. So the, the underground... One of, our, one of our, our motto is radically different, no excuses. I like it. I really like it. So in a minute, we're going to do a tasting. And uh, we actually have some, you know, traditional... You say, you, you, you told us it kind of compares to Knob Creek. So we're going to try it with some Knob yeah, Creek and some definitely. Woodford Reserve. Some traditional bourbons that are aged for many, many years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have a couple of bourbon experts... Well, at least bourbon and those, drinkers. And, and, those are, and those are definitely good bourbons. The key is, especially with the Knob Creek, you want to compare something that's the same proof. Right. So Knob Creek should be 100 proof. Our Cleveland Brack Reserve is 100 proof. That makes for a good, fair comparison. Fair enough. Hey, Tom, really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Same here. All right. Thank we'll have so our much. tasting in a moment. Take care and good luck with Cleveland. Uh, right, everybody should. So. What's the website? Cleveland? Clevelandwhiskey.com. Whiskey.com. I smell bourbon, so I came over. Yeah. <laughs> this is Alan yeah. Melventano. You see him on This Week go. in Computer Hardware. Oh, go, go on the other side here. Alan wow. is also... Uh
Where, where, where are we going to put here? it? I guess he's going Where do I here. put his booze? I'll be over here. He's over also here. a uh, expert on storage and hard drives and uh, writes regularly for PC Perspective, but he also lives in Kentucky. I do. Which is the home, is it not, of Kentucky bourbon, the uh, finest have, bourbon in the world. I have been to the place where they make the Woodford Reserve, which, ah. is, which is one of the ones where we're going to taste. Right. So today we're trying the Cleveland. All I don't right. want to put them too close because I don't want you to compare colors. Uh, we're going to try the Cleveland. We're going to try the Woodford Reserve. And we're going to try Knob Creek. These are all roughly the same are high the, proof. Are the numbers supposed to be the different ones? Yes. There's okay. numbers on the bottom. So you're just going to say... I have three what? of the same. That yes. would not go well. Yes. Well, how do you know which is which? <laughs> oh, here. You, you two take... Yeah, and then you one. take one of these. And I'll take And a, I'll take one of the... Whoa, shh. Oh, okay, that's the, that's the Woodford... No, there's enough Wait, still in there. We didn't even start Don't drinking. Three, right. so I have a one, three, uh -huh. and a six. Yeah, yeah I got a one, three, and a six. Okay, all right, let's all good. taste all right, the one and see the what one? we think. All right. Mm, we should be doing it this, at the end of the episode, Father Robert says. One has some nice vanilla notes. Yep. It's not super potent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Stop. Kick. <laughs> you don't Easy, have to Alex. drink it all, Easy. Alex. Easy, buddy. I'm not right. gonna. There's it's the one. The There's second, the one. Second thought. You know, it's okay if this smells like a brewery. It's gonna be a brewery. So we don't really care if I spill a little whiskey here. What okay, do you want to do next? To, are we going to three? Three. All right. We'll do the three next. All right. Alex, you're such a pro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. It's good. Oh, it's different. It's very different, right? I like that. This tastes a little, little more potent. Little, yeah, a little bit more, little yeah, more spice to it. Spice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then the six. And th let's start by you just tell me what you like best. This isn't six, that's a two? That's a two. Okay. I was wondering why you did one, three, and six. All right, this is two. Mm. Okay, this has a whole nother thing going on. All right, what do you think, gentlemen? First of all, which one do you think was aged like a few days? <laughs> so I'm going to guess that number two is this one. You think, so let's put Alex, you're going to put the two next to the Cleveland. Wait, you have a two? Yeah, that's the, the six. six. I called it six, but it looks like... Oh, it, it's a two. It's a two upside down. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's two. You think two is the Cleveland? I think that's two. I yeah. think the one is the Cleveland, personally. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I think Which the one, one is the knob? I think, what was the first one we had? We had the first one was the, th the, the one, Number right? One. We went one, yes. three, two. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say that the three is the knob. Mm. Uh, yeah, because I am pretty sure that the number one is Woodford. Yep. Really? Woodford. All right. And, then, and, and, I, so, and I only say that because I have walked through their plant. You, you <laughs> so, have it in um, your blood. Yeah, I've walked through their, their, uh, their I'm going to say the three is Woodford and the six is Knob right, Creek. So yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm with Alex. You're with, with Alex? All right. All so right. We're, so, okay. We uh, that was fun. Now I don't know what to do next. Oh, you tell me. Now we might be right. horribly wrong. Number one is Woodford Reserve. Number one yes. is Woodford Reserve. Got it. All right. Number two is Cleveland. Number two is Cleveland. You both got that one right. Right. And number three is Knob Creek. I right. was the only one who got all three wrong. That's because you were you were you were drinking with the experts. We have drank and the many experts gallons. got every these, single these one ones. right. <laughs> you guys nailed it. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Now, thank you, thank you. the most important thing is, if I served you this, would you turn your nose up at it? No. Not at all. It was, it's comparable. It was it's, it's, I would just, say it's, it's just that it's a different taste. It's mm -hmm. just different, and yeah. you recognize the different tastes of the others. Yeah. I think I the thing that distinguishes this one, I think, is there's a little bit of a cinnamon exactly. taste yeah. that, I, that I don't taste in the Normally other Normally in a whiskey, there was just like a little bit of a spice to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that was the thing that distinguishes it, I think, a, a bit. I think it's very good. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's like tingly. Yep. Yeah, so that's maybe uh, hmm, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, I guess it passes. Tom, what do you think? <laughs> we, uh, the, the whiskey, uh, the bourbon experts got it all right. Leo, though, I loved them all, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that's great. You know, and everybody has different uh, taste buds. You'll taste things differently. It's like, I know, you know, I can't stand asparagus, but people love uh, yeah, asparagus, yeah, and yeah. I don't understand that. So everything, everybody will taste everything differently. But the point here is that we're trying to make something comparable with that Cleveland Black Reserve. When we get to the Cleveland Underground, we're trying to take things into a whole new age of whiskey. I have to say... This, you could easily serve this, and people would love it, yep. and would probably not say a word. 
right. until oh, you told absolutely. them. Absolutely, it totally yeah. it totally fits yeah. in with the with the other two that yeah. we had there. These were very this um, was they were all comparable. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. and I think that you know I, I'm actually interested in it because of that spice. I'm interested in using it in things like For, a Negroni or right. a Manhattan or, uh, or other things just to see right. how that. It would you know, interact differently than, yeah, yeah, completely differently. But at no yeah. point do you say, oh, that's corn liquor. It's not. No, it's really, not really all. good. It's well good. done, Tom. Thank you. And thank you thank for you. putting up with our informal tasting. Hey, thanks for having <laughs> yeah. me on the show. All right. Take care. Tom Licks, founder and CEO of Cleveland Whiskey, Cleveland Whiskey. That was great.